Professor Chomsky, uh, recently has been accumulated uh, a lot of information about the genome of Neanderthals and uh, because particularly because of Slante Pabo school in Leipzig and others. Uh, some people believe that the Neanderthals were possessing language as well. Uh, would you be so should we exclude completely under Neanderthals from the possessing language according to your opinion? Well, the there's been a lot of work coming out recently from the Max Planck Center in Nijmegen uh, alleging that uh, uh, Neanderthals had speech capacity. I think it's complete nonsense, frankly. Uh, there's, uh, but instead of, uh, there's a paper that just came out about it, if you're interested, by, uh, came out in Frontiers of Psychology by uh, half a dozen authors. I was one of them. but. Uh, uh, they're specialists in the topic. Uh, Dick Lewontin, one of the major evolutionary biologists. Uh, uh, Johann Ballhuis, major student of birdsong. Mark Hauser, primatologist. Uh, Charles Yang, computational scientist. And Bob Berwick covers all these fields. They, it goes through all of this stuff in some detail. And I just think it's really fantasy. I mean, it's based on evidence so skimpy that you just can't build anything on it. I mean, it's true that Neanderthals did survive until maybe 30,000 years ago. And anyway, they, they, and there are sites where Neander, you have both Neanderthal and hominid human, you know, human homo sapiens mixed. So there was interaction. Uh, one of the big discoveries, allegedly, as that's excited people, is the discovery. They, they've done genomic analysis of Neanderthals, finally. There's a Finnish uh, scientist who's been able to do this. And it turns out that there's a small percentage of Neanderthal genes uh, in uh, humans, mostly, I think, in around the Mediterranean area where there were a lot of Neanderthals. And that's supposed to mean something. It means absolutely nothing. I mean, but the biologists are well aware that you get species uh, at cross fertilization at some low level, even distinct species. So this literally tells you nothing. And in fact, as far as I know, most of the, the evidence that's presented just doesn't stand up. I mean, if it were true, it wouldn't tell you anything. So suppose Neanderthals had also undergone whatever, or suppose that whatever this change was happened, say, 700,000 years ago, uh, prior to the separation of uh, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. OK, same, same problems. And an additional problem. How come for 700,000 years it never exhibited itself in the archaeological record? Another mystery. So, so that would simply, it's the same is true if you could, suppose you could show someday that apes, there's been an enormous effort to try to show that apes can acquire something like language. I mean, if, if that ever succeeded, it would be a biological miracle. It would mean that apes had this incredible capacity that has made it possible for humans to sort of take over the world, but they never thought of using it. I mean, it would be like trying to find, finding, say, on some desert island, a, a perfectly constructed bird, uh, which had never thought of flying until some humans came and said, hey, why don't you fly? You know? I mean, it's not a logical impossibility, but no biologist should expect anything like that. And in fact, the whole enterprise is kind of senseless, in my opinion. There's no point to trying to do it. It can't work out. And the fact that it doesn't work out shouldn't surprise anyone. And I think the same, at the moment, I think the same can be said about Neanderthals. But have a look at the article. It's in current issue of Frontiers of 